Let, let's yep. speak to Liz, because Liz, you came from a strong academic family, yeah. and when you were growing up, you had quite a lot of pressure on yourself, didn't you? Fundamentally, I think we and many people that I've spoken to basically agree that when you're raising children, you give them a good moral compass, you, you mm. want them to be confident, you teach them right from wrong. Mm. And that's kind of what we have to remember what we're doing when we're raising children, is we're trying to make people who, when they go out into the world, they can survive. And I think the press has a huge amount of responsibility here to be very, very careful about what they print, what stories they print. There are, there are medical, there are surveys, thousands of surveys every single day. They disappear into various scientific journals here and there. It only takes a quiet news day for a news editor to go, oh, I know, let's just slip this in. Bam, suddenly there's a massive panic. Oh. He had 36 hours in order to mate with his girlfriend. It only happens once a year. They get this window of opportunity where the female panda can become pregnant. No pressure at all. The good thing this, you think, this? I think reducing the number of boxes to tick and the amount of assessment that goes on in these early years, yes, is definitely a really good thing. And the real problem now is that we all have these, you know, phones with cameras. Everybody's carrying a camera. So it doesn't have to be your long lens, you know, we'll take a picture from five miles away. And people don't seem to be able to understand that we have our public life, which is what we're all yeah. doing now. But when we all leave the studio, you're a private person. You're just you and you can go shopping. Yeah. We are curious. I'm, we are I'm curious not, and we I'm look. not going to look. You are such a no, liar. I've already looked. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to be the one to teach my children about that when I think they're good and ready and parents should be taking on that responsibility. With parenting expert Liz Fraser, you're basically saying to your daughter, and, and I've read the things that you've said, you will not be happy with your body when you get older. Hold on, wait, hold no, on, no, no, because you've had a nice long chat. Um, and therefore, I'm in putting this money for you so that when you're unhappy with your body, you will be able to improve it, which is exactly the opposite message of what one is supposed to be saying to a child to build their self-confidence, which is you're fine just as you are. You know, you're beautiful, you're one, and there is much more to life when you're eight years old than worrying about how you look. Um, on a much lighter note, my favourite was the number of times the average couple kiss in a day. What do you reckon? Oh. In a day, three times. Three times. That's well, Christmas that's lot, Day. That is it? in my house. You should be lucky with three. <laughs> oh, what what kind of kiss? Uh, they don't go into the details. <laughs> yeah. You see, the devil's in the detail on those kind of stories. Like nice. Do you know what though? Uh, the Girl Guiding Association did a sur survey about three years ago, and they interviewed uh, girls, obviously between about ten and seventeen, and they asked about their general happiness and their general well-being, and, and the results were staggeringly low. How happy they felt. Mm. Of course, the very best thing is to find something that they think is cool. Karate is huge now thanks to the remake of The Karate Kid, as is all kinds of dancing from ballroom to street. Anything to get them moving. That nobody sets out to have their family fail. Everybody wants to raise their children, or, or whether they don't have children perhaps, they want to live in some sort of supportive, loving structure. That can be a gay parent, that can be mixed race parents. It doesn't matter, I would argue, that it doesn't matter at all. The form of the family doesn't matter because the function remains the same. As we all know, a long time ago, some scientist once said that there might be a link between the MMR vaccine and I'm autism. Of course, there is also a slight link we're finding between not having MMR and getting measles, mumps or rubella. What's changed, though, is the amount of this advertising and the media through which this advertising mm. comes. And I think that's where a lot of parents are kind of going, hang on a second, this is very intrusive. Yeah. So, in a sense, you could welcome today because it's empowering for perhaps shyer women than you. Well, I, I mean, I welcome, I welcome anything which, which allows people to, to take a little more control of their lives. <laughs> I just I find it extraordinary. I know so many women who have sat back and waited and waited and waited <laughs> for you people <laughs> to finally say, darling, would you like to marry me? And I just... I was with a man that I was very much in love with. We were about to part company to different countries. And I thought, well, if I don't ask now, I'm never going to know. So I asked. It's, it's to do with saying there are certain things which belong in the adult domain and there are certain things which belong in the children's domain. If you would like to read lads mags, if you want to look at porn, for example, you can go and get it. It's fine and it's there and it's available. When I was young, it was always on the top shelf and that's where you would go to get it. Well, this is always the problem with these parenting classes and what has been shown in the past to be the case is that most of the people who go are the people who don't really need to go. Uh, you know, you have to be in quite a confident place, I think, as a person to say, I'm going to go to this thing. This is a class which is teaching me how to do something that at root level I think I should know how to do. I think there's a, there's a very innate sense that we should know how to parent. So when we discover that we find it very difficult, we feel that we failed immediately. You'd like to say, Liz? I'd like to say, can I stay for a tipple, please, afterwards? Oh, yeah. That's what you're doing next. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. We can arrange that. Guy.